And let's start. So thanks everybody for joining me today. Uh, my name is Gabriel Brent, and in case uh, you'd like to see a little uh, face with the voice that you hear, uh, that is what I look like. So uh, let's get to the meat of today. All right. So um, this is the Epizones training. Uh, this is kind of a more uh, interactive workshop, if you will, uh, where we want to make sure that we answer your questions. Okay. And um, it, during this time, we are going to cover a, a whole bunch of different. Or during this training session, we cover a whole bunch of different topics. Uh, a bunch of different ideas and, and things like that. So um, we cover the the topics of not only the software, how to use the software, um, what the settings all mean, all that kind of stuff, but we also dive into money management, trade management, um, trading psychology, um, because having your mind right is a huge thing in, in everything. So... Uh, um, just that emotional state of being to where you can make a, uh, a trade uh, successfully and, and and you feel confident in your decision uh, no matter what that decision is. So it's kind of what we're uh, going to be discussing, like all those topics that we can discuss during a, uh, a Thursday's training session, if you will. All right. So hello, Brandon. How are you doing today? Um, so... That is kind of what this uh, meeting is for. Um, I really do want it to be more interactive. Um, I know this stuff like the back of my hand, um, possibly even a little bit better, um, just because I watch it every day for several hours plus, you know, I've made it all from scratch. So uh, please feel free to ask any questions, um, comments, anything like that. Uh, those are all welcome, and uh, participation is extremely encouraged. So uh, please feel free to uh, ask those questions and, and things right now. Um, and if you can just put them in the questions box, that's fine. I'll try to get to all questions today. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, we cover the material well uh, and uh, we go into enough detail so that everybody understands what's happening on their charts. Okay, so right now you are looking at my uh, my day trade charts. Um, uh, if you guys don't have this workspace and would like this workspace, please let me know. Um, I'm actually going to be posting this as well as a few other people's workspaces on the Appazones website in the members area, uh, just so that uh, you can see what uh, profitable traders' workspaces look like um, in case you're not in that arena yet, okay? So um, there will be several different uh, perspectives, I'm sure, and several different setups. So um, I have a two-chart, and a, or I'm sorry, a two-screen and a, a one-screen setup. Um, some people might have a three-screen or a six-screen setup, you know, just based on their their personal style and what they like to watch and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, these are my two um, charts that I use. Uh, now, I think it's the, the best place to start with, with what, what's going on here is to actually remove um, all the zones on, on this chart here, uh, just to give you an idea of, of kind of what I like to do. All right. So... Um, technically speaking, I, I do have the ability to, to pull up a third chart, which the third tar chart is this 260-minute, uh, um, I'm sorry, 240-minute or a four-hour time frame. So I like to look at that just for um, the, the big picture, you know, keeping the big picture in mind. What is that really telling us? You know, uh, we see uh, another retest here. Um, this was the second retest on the zone, failure to break the high, and it looks like we're in a channel on this market, you know, or in a range, if you will. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say channel. Uh, I mean, it looks like we're in a range here, okay? So um, that's something to, to note about this, you know? Um, 
And don't ask me what all the circles on the chart mean, uh, or little zones and highlighted zones, because I'll add those from time to time, and, you know, I, I may be referring to another chart or another perspective. Like, this may be the big daily zone up here or something like that. I, I don't really know. Um, it does look like there is some type of internal confluence down here, but... Um, don't know what the circle means, don't know what that line really means, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, those are just things that I've probably shared with people as I'm going along doing my thing, okay? So that's to, to understand, too. Um, something else that I, I think is real interesting is uh, overall, over the past um, few days here, uh, this is my 15-minute chart, and I uh, want to note that we do have 180 days loaded on this chart, and the uh, NYMEX Energy RTH. So if you're using NinjaTrader, which I love NinjaTrader, I use NinjaTrader all the time. Uh, it's my preferred platform that I trade off of. I am on a, on a RTH chart, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. And you can kind of see, like, we've been in this range here for the past several days coming down, you know, from the big levels. You know, you can see, like, we've been failing to break the 108.93 level, and we came down, you know. So now we're retesting this, this level down here. Okay, so realizing what's going on there, nice little channel trading uh, from top to bottom, so to speak. Um, Yesterday we had some cool retests of the, the below channel or the bottom part of that channel line, uh, as you can see. So uh, that hit and, and that hit were, were interesting areas for us. Um, but we really didn't know what that channel looked like until uh, a couple days ago, you know. So connecting up the lines, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, the channel is actually a, a very interesting thing, and there's going to be um, some development in the Epizone's product line for channels and channel trading. Um, so that's what we're, we're going to be looking at uh, later on, coming down the, the pike, if you will. Um, but uh, just wanted to highlight some, some things with you guys. Um, like right now, we're in that big uh, four-hour zone, um, and if we look at uh, our 60-minute zones, uh, that are superimposed off of our RTH chime. You know, you can see the big 60M and the 60M over here. Um, I'm actually going to probably save this real quick. And what I like to do, and I don't know why this isn't on this particular chart, but we're going to change that right now, is I like to make the 60Ms a little bit bigger in the font size just so that I know that, oh, you know what? That's a little bit bigger. That's a little bit more important um, for me. So I, I definitely want to make sure that that uh, goes noticed. You know, that's, that's something that's um, special, you know, because they are bigger. Um, a lot of times they will hold uh, supply and demand a whole lot better, support and resistance type stuff uh, inside those areas. So then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And uh, we modify those, so now those 60Ms are a little bit bigger than the other fonts and the other text there. So I can minimize, or I can take off my 60Ms, and you can see where the 15-minute zones are, because this is my 15-minute chart. And I can take those off, and I can also show like my 5-minute time frames. So you can see where all the little 5-minute zones are on there. So... Um, and kind of the confluence that uh, all the zones have together if you en enable all three of them. Now, when you're looking at multiple time frames with the MTF, which I just really love the MTF because it's a, a real big time saver, and, you know, if, you're, you're, if you just turn them on and off singly or together or, or singly, you can see a lot of the, the fractal nature of the markets as well as, you know, um, some really, really cool stuff. You know, so I really like that uh, ability. Um, plus, I love to be able to keep my charts extremely clean, you know. Um, uh, I'm probably going to be making uh, some more effort to take 
uh, take everything off or everything on the chart. Um, that's APA zones, just so that it, you can get back to the price bars. And the price bars mean everything to me. Um, I love just looking at the bars. They, they tell me so, so much. Okay. Um, so let's get back into the analysis here. Okay. Well, actually, let me save this, this template real quick. Um, and all I do to uh, save this, and if you guys are closing down your, your charts all the time, um, uh, I would recommend just coming over here and um, just manually save your workspace. And uh, apparently it's being used by another process. That's interesting. So I'll have to figure out what other process might be using it right now. But uh, I would just go ahead and manually save that when you do make changes to it. And so when you close down your Ninja Trader or when you close down the workspace, if you go workspace close, like I have some of this other stuff open here, like the weekly forecast. Um, so if I go to close that down, it'll pop up with that little message. This is just a little Ninja Trader thing. Uh, and yes, this uh, webinar will be recorded and posted. So uh, do you want to hit uh, save workspaces changes? Um, I always click no whenever it asks me to save changes because you may not realize what you're doing. You may have changed stuff around and you decide to close down your Ninja Trader or your your workspace and, you know, just always hit no on any dialogues that pop up unless you manually save something. Uh, so that's just one of those things that I've noticed. It's kind of helped me um, while I've been using Ninja Trader over the years. So um, just personal choice there, you know. Uh, so anyway, this is kind of what we're, we're looking at today um, as far as the crude oil market is concerned. Um, we did break out of the, the, the channel line in a very dramatic fashion, failed to close the gap. Um, that we saw here on the RTH chart, and we just drove down into the big 240-60 minute level that we have down here. Okay, so that is um, very interesting to me. All right. Now, technically speaking, you notice that I have some some stuff drawn on this chart, and uh, I think the interesting thing about this is uh, this is a possible reversal. And this is kind of how I'd do a, a normal trade, if you will, um, if I was doing it off of my smaller time frame. But this one's more of a swing trade, if you will, because, you know, you're going for 50 ticks, you know, straight off the bat. All right. But um, basically, we have new lows coming into this zone. And we know that this zone has been around for several months, you know, so this is really not that big of a surprise that we are down here. Let me see if I can double click on this thing and get it to pop up here. So it was started back last month, this particular zone was, but the four hour zone is, is it's like a few months old at least. Um, goes all the way back to Well, actually, no. It's not a few months old. It was started last month, the beginning of last month, um, about this time. So the month, this four-hour zone is only a month old. Um, but uh, you know, it's it, it's had some time. It's had some bounces off of it. So anything can happen here. But right now, we're seeing some price action here that leads us to suspect that this may be a, a good long entry. And uh, if we use a 15-minute uh, bars to enter off of. Uh, the way that I like to do things is wait for confirmation that this is truly the bottom, you know. So um, same thing on the 15 minute as the 60 minute or the 500 tick or five minute chart, whatever you're looking at, you know, same deal. So we come down here real fast, but as soon as you, you make the new low, I'm looking for a red bar to retest, okay. Looking for the red bar to retest the uh, like this green bar that was formed there, and you get it on that one. Okay. Um, now notice the next candle is an inside candle here, 
So we don't make a new low, we don't make a new high, we're just consolidating, all right? So on the next bar, um, this is interesting, and where I like to enter is at the opens of bars, okay? So since this is now a new retest of this low here, okay, um, I'm feeling that uh, if we go lower than that, that's fine. But if this thing breaks the high of this bar, I want to enter long at the open of the red candle because it's completed, it's done. And lo and behold, uh, you have a green candle that, uh, that starts down here. Looks like it goes all the way down here to uh, roughly the open of the screen candle here and then it comes up and pops the top of the previous red candle. So this could be consolidation here um, and it definitely looks like it is uh, but uh, if this thing is to break to the long side um, you want to play targets somewhere in this range uh, and especially if it's off of like a 15 minute chart you know um, you want to make sure your risk reward is in place and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I'm looking for maybe something right around in that range uh, so that I have basically like a one-to-one -one ratio going on here um, as well as the next target is uh, the filling of the gap, you know, as well as kind of a, a bounce on this channel line that I have drawn right there, the, the bottom part of that channel line. And then the third zone is going from this 60, or I'm sorry, the third target is going from this 60 minute area all the way up to the next 60 minute area, you know? So we're just going from zone to zone. Um, so keep it simple, right? Uh, so that's that would be my, uh, my three targets on this particular setup if I was using the 15 minute chart for my entries, okay? Um, now obviously this zone is yellow, so anything can happen down here, um, but uh, price action has given me an entry here at this open of the scandal, so um, it could break up, it could break down, you know, nobody knows, um, but that's what I'm looking for. And the reason why I put my first target like right around in, in this area here um, was because you see where that previous low was? right there. Um, I'm using just below that or right there touching that. That's a lot of times a really good first target because we a lot of times get the flip-flop of support and resistance. So if we found support here once, um, it's likely that we'll find resistance here the next time price bounces there. So we want to be taking our target um, before that. And uh, if this trade were to, to work out in, in my favor, you know, you would completely pay for your trade. You'd have a one-to-one -one ratio here, which isn't all that great, um, but I would be taking off two-thirds of my position at this particular area, okay? So I completely pay for my trade if I get my T1 plus some, okay? Because we're running around with multiple contracts, yada, 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 um, that pays for my trade, and then some right there, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, I actually had a nice 100 tick move uh, down today, so that was very cool. Um, got a, a good chunk of this, this big move down into this zone here, um, especially after it failed to break the high um, uh, or the, uh, the high of the opening bar, you know, and it was right around that S2 level. So... That was pretty cool, and uh, you know you just take it down. So um, it's uh, you, we want to keep things pretty simple in our analysis and and things like that. So um, yeah, I, I was thinking long at the beginning of the day. Uh, got stopped out of a trade uh, on the long side, um, but uh, you know the, the the short side worked out very nicely. So. Um, that was uh, kind of my day, you know, and 100 tick runner definitely makes up for, you know, a long trade up there because I was using small stops and, you know, 10 to 12 tick stops kind of deal. So um, that, that's that been my day today. Um, not too bad. Um, so 
that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, something else that I want to share with you guys on here is um, we saw the entry like for this long position on the 15 minute. Um, so what does it look like uh, on our like on like a 500 tick chart, right? Um, so I believe the uh, I'm going to have to move some stuff around here now just so that I can actually. And get to uh, see where the entry and stuff would be on this particular deal that we're looking at in live time here. So you're looking at about um, uh, 102.70, 69, somewhere in there. So if we look at uh, 102.70 or 69, we can see here on the uh, the 500 tick chart, which is what I like to use for an entry chart, but I don't really trade off of these bars so much, just so you guys know, because, I, I mean, let's face it, um, you're taking 50 ticks of risk um, times multiples, you know, so that's easily uh, a few thousand bucks. Um, so your first target is is going to be, you know, making you a few thousand um, in addition to whatever you risk, you're risking on this trade. And you know you're going for a um, thousand of like fourteen hundred dollars for your second target and four thousand dollars for your third. You know, so it's uh, it's quite a bit. You know, um, so that's kind of what's going into my mind. Like this is like a really more of a swing trade type of setup. If it does work out, you know. Um, but the setup at uh, like 70 and 69 area, notice that uh, we break the top here, you know, of uh, the previous red candle, which top was at 70. So let's see if we can find this here. And we're looking at like 830. So um, there was your top at 830. Let's see which candle was at 845. Let's look at 845 here. So somewhere in this range was where our 15 minute candle closed here. Okay. So as soon as it breaks that high, we're looking to enter at the open of that candle. So that would have put us entering somewhere like on this price action right here. Which you notice that I have the uh, at the time. Uh, deal setup. Now, what App of Time does is it highlights the five minutes before the bottom of the hour, which is at 8:30, and um, after five minutes after 8:30. So this will run from uh, seven, uh, excuse me, 8:25 to 9:35. Uh, same for this one here, uh, except this one is identifying. 8 o'clock, so um, 7.55 to 8.05. And you'll notice that as we look at these different areas, a lot of times we will get good retracements and uh, turns right around these times of day. Um, and it just gives us a little bit of confidence, you know, saying, oh, well, wow, you know, like it's touching. Uh, this happens to be the 5-minute moving average off the, um, uh, excuse me, the 20 moving average off the 5-minute chart. So as touching that, you know, we were pretty close to going into 7 o'clock, which tends to be like a, uh, a reversal type. And um, in, in this case, I would say that's more of a retrace, you know. And so we, we got the short call, you know. Um, now, unfortunately, I was not able to, to get it right there as it, it did that. But I saw this, like, this channel forming here. So um, I was able to, to get into the short um, after, like, this little micro-channel forms. And you'll notice, like, on these micro-channels, like, if you get on the wrong side of this micro-channel and, like, try to take it to the long side, that stuff will eat you alive. Um, and it's just really, really relentless. Um, but you will see a lot of micro-channels form on crude like this, you know, like, it's just like really, really tight, narrow channels, you know, and it just drives and drives and drives and pushes and 
it allows you to maybe like try to get a few ticks up, you know, and then it just slams it right back down in your face, you know. And um, you see a lot of that on crude, actually. Um, but uh, you know that when you get something slammed in your face that you were on the wrong side of a micro channel, you know. Um, <laughs> it's usually what, what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was... That was um, definitely today's push, you know, was just this big micro channel down here. Um, so I, I was actually able to get short at the, the bottom of this little doji candle here. And uh, then I wrote it down to uh, my first target was like uh, 11 or 12 ticks just to the low of this here. Um, got that. And then a, a 60 minute level, which was about 30 some ticks down, and then 100 ticks for my third and final target. So, um, which was really, really nice. You know, uh, it, it, it gives you a different energy, it gives you a different, uh, I don't know, it, it just it makes the world right somehow, you know, <laughs> uh, to be on the right side of a, of a good trade. So, um, that is kind of how it works. Uh, let's see if we have some of the uh, stuff here. Um, Okay, so, but the, the Appa Zone is not going to show up until after the turn, right? Well, it depends upon what chart you're looking at and what time frames you're looking at. So, um, a lot of times uh, on these micro channels and stuff like that, it'll be a nice, like, little retest of something here. This thing was just, y you can see, like, it was a five-minute retest of that, uh, or five-minute, excuse me, price touched the five-minute 20 moving average and then zoomed away, okay? And just above us, we have the 15-minute 20 moving average, okay? And this thing is obviously the trender coming down off the 500 tick chart too. And so all those things were pointed down, and that thing just barely grazed the 5-minute, which a lot of times, I don't know if you guys have heard me say this before, but moving averages will act as temporary support and resistance, just because it's one of those like self-fulfilling prophecies more than anything else like people are watching them so a lot of times you're going to get um, support and resistance kicking in there uh, you'll see things like that happen uh, if you can get like a, a zone and a moving average together uh, a lot of times that acts very very nicely to kick something up or down um, but uh, that happens all the time okay so look for price action to reverse or right around the like the five minute, fifteen minute moving averages. Uh, it may just be a hiccup, but um, a lot of times there's some good support and resistance that that may come in to help you in your your trade. You know, so I think it's worthwhile to put them on there. Um, I'm actually probably going to put in a feature so I can turn those off too, uh, just so. Uh, and, I mean, it, they look very jaggedy because these are a 5 and a 15-minute moving average put on my 500 tick. So that level doesn't change for 5 minutes, you know, whereas there's a lot of price movement in that 5-minute bar, you know, on a 500 tick. So that's why they're all jaggedy like that. But if we go up to a 5-minute um, uh, candle or, yeah, if we go up to a 5-minute candle, those that five minute moving average will smooth all out, you know, even though it's being pulled off of that particular time frame. Um, so that's to be noted as well. Um, but looking at the potential for the long on the 15 minute chart, um, I would say that that's kind of it. Now, something else to also put into this analysis is the time of day. All right. So we are entering um, right around the New York, and uh, right now we're in to the, the New York lunchtime, you know. So um, trading after 9 o'clock really isn't my thing. Um, 
obviously, you know, good moves can can happen and can uh, persist um, into the afternoon sessions. Um, but uh, I really like to stop trading by nine o'clock. You know, a nine is nine is the very last that I could possibly take a trade. And it, it was a nice little retest of this level, you know, and it's really range bound. Realize that we've already had a, a very big move down for the day, so it's possible that we could get the retracement during the afternoon session, but um, it can also stay range locked for the rest of the day, just bouncing back and forth and bounce back and forth and that just really, really stinks, you know. So, um, don't know if you guys were trading and all, but um, you can see a lot of times there there is uh, support or resistance on Globex high and low levels. So, looking at today, um, you saw like the Globex high, uh, low here held as uh, um, so, excuse me as resistance for quite a while. Um, it was almost like a, uh, well, if you take it from there, it was almost a full uh, half hour or so that it just bounced right around in that area, not doing anything. And then it feels like it was a false breakout, and then boom, 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 boom you know, and, uh, and away we go. And if we look at it on our 15-minute bars, um, really what happened was we just failed to break the, the high of the, the opening 15-minute range. Um, it's kind of how I read it, as well as uh, the the S2 level was there. So, hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, I probably need to look at the questions here. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Uh, where is the recording going to be posted? That will be on the website under the members section, under like the how to for Ninja Trader and stuff. Um, can I show the entry on the 500 to try? Yeah. Um, I assume that you're talking about the, uh, the entry off of this, uh, five, uh, 15 minute bar. So, uh, again, if you weren't here for that, um, I believe that the close was, uh, of this 15 minute bar was somewhere around 845. So you'd be looking to get long, uh, somewhere on, on like this candle right here. Um, it was the retest of that open, so you'd be uh, you'd be looking long somewhere in there, but your stop would have to be below that for sure. And the the safe one would be to actually put your stop below the 60 minute level. That would be the the safe way to go on this particular trade. So um, let me highlight that in a different color to know that this was like. A little stop loss so um, that would be the the safe way to go because there's nothing that says that price has to bounce before that that level there but if it breaks the 60 minute level you definitely know that something's happened there so you, you just gotta manage your risk appropriately um, can you take that much heat you know um, what kind of position or what kind of a trader are you? Uh, for me, this is way beyond what I want to be risking, you know. Um, but it's a potential setup, so I just thought I would share that with you guys. And, uh, you know, the market can do absolutely anything it wants to. Uh, again, like this this level has been hit a, a couple times already, so it, it could easily fall through there. You know, this could just be ranging, and then it falls through. There's really two outcomes here that we have, but um, we will see what happens. Uh, yeah, um, the ideal... Uh, setup for something like this is if the the zone is aqua color like this 60 minute zone is up there um, that is our ideal setup um, we want that to uh, we really want to be taking trades off the aqua zones 
which yeah. gives us our money bounces, as they were. And you'll hear me refer to that quite a bit uh, in different presentations and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, I can share with you guys my short. I just took it off of this because I realized that there was like a micro channel forming and I was like in my 7 o'clock time so I just entered it at this and took this thing down here. Um, so it was wherever that was and then I had like a 60 minute level that was somewhere right in that range and uh, that, was, that was pretty much it. Not too complicated at all. Um, now this was kind of an aggressive entry, I would say, um, but I I was really feeling the micro channel start to form, and uh, after seeing the doji and like just the way that this thing was acting, you know, like I just felt like that was that was a really good place, and I think I actually got filled on that bar right there because it just barely got me, and then it was like boom, you know, um, so that that happened within a couple seconds um, literally like it, it I, I I hardly even saw my first target like it was just right there so and uh, and then it just kept on going uh, yes uh, Jose we can definitely do that for you What are all the time zones on my charts? Um, so with APA zones, uh, MTF, you'll see like 60M stands for 60 minute, 5N stands for 5. Um, personally, I have, uh, on like this 500 tick chart, um, I have uh, the 60 minute, the 150 tick, the 15 minutes, and uh, the zones of the the 500 chart, uh, the 500 tick as well. Uh, the reason why I have 150 tick is a lot of times these levels will be really good uh, trend following levels. Um, so you'll see a lot of good like little retests, quick, quick and fast little retests that if you feel that you're on a trend um, and on a trend move you will see a nice little um, retest of one of these zones and uh, you can get on get on the bus you know so uh, that's what the 150 tick chart really allows me to do um, the other interesting thing is uh, a lot of times these things have an uncanny knack for I don't know like look at this you know like If we look at this little setup right here, you see how that thing is, uh, is like went all the way down here, and then like uh, of all places, like it it found resistance right up here, you know, off of a 150 tick. Now you want to be careful in taking that, but uh, it was definitely a, an interesting area, you know. Um, and it gave us some decent consolidation here and then it retested that 150 tick like to the very top of it you know and then dropped down now why does that happen um, a lot of that is just uh, support and resistance flip-flopping we may see something over here to the left uh, that that looks really really good and like maybe a previous low that was right at that level um, that actually might be the bottom of the 60 minute level that we got uh, that price drove through uh, because you know how f that flip flop tends to happen so that could have been the bottom of the uh, 60 minute level I, I'd have to go check that out on my 60 minute time frame but uh, stuff like that happens a lot so you'll see like uh, like the low 60 minute level as well as you know like 150 tick zone is sitting right there and it just like works out like clockwork or something you know so um, it's pretty crazy how that happens but uh, that's what I would guess and right now things have just like 
I would say really since this is pretty choppy in here, guys. Like this is this is kind of ugly, to be honest with you. Um, but this stuff that we have going on right now, you just want to stay the heck out of it, <laughs> you know. Um, and what I try to do first and foremost is I always try to trade the range. So uh, if we can establish a range off of this, like if we look at this like yellow zone down here, and uh, let's say this this is our our high up there, you know, like if you let's let's give it a little bit more room. Like let's just say that that's our range. All right. So now we know where the range is, and let's just play the range, you know. Um, like, that's that's a total valid type of thing to do, especially during the lunch hour, you know. Just trade the range back and forth, you know. So you want your first tick quick, or your first target quick, your next target, you know, at the top or bottom of the range. And uh, you just want to go back and forth. Now, why did I put the range a little bit lower? Well, I was actually looking kind of over here at this little this little area at uh, 7.30ish, my time. And you can kind of see, like, all the consolidation of these uh, opens and closes and kind of like a little retest there. And uh, I don't know, it just looks like this is this is the top of that range there. So that's kind of how I see that range um, forming, and it just looks like we're in Chopzilla land, you know, and really someplace that you don't want to trade. Um, but you got to trade the chop as well as you can, uh, as well as you, you trade the range too, or I'm sorry, the uh, the trend, you know, because you never know when you're going to get a, um, a a good move, you know. You, you could get a great move some days, and other days you could you could see this all day long. You you just never know. Um, and uh, it's nice to think that uh, you know after you have had a good move in the the market that maybe the next day will not be as as big of a range. You know because a lot of times you get expansion and then consolidation bars. That does happen. But um, I think it's more important to to look at where we are in the grand picture here, especially on CL, you know, like we're down here in this four hour zone, right? So technically I feel that we could range from, from this level to this level for a while, you know, um, and looking over to our left here, you know, we see some, a little bit of, uh, consolidation over there. So that may come into effect and give us uh, resistance to the upside. You know, like it kind of like flip-flops a little bit there. Um, sometimes price can drive through a period and then like it uh, it reverses and then it acts as, as this area could act as resistance to us, to the upside, you know. Um, and it could range around in here for you know, several hours, you know, maybe even a few four-hour bars. Might even range into tomorrow. Um, it's totally possible. So it's hard to say. Um, but I, I do know that up here uh, we do have some resistance. It's going to kick in right around in here. Okay. So I do see that going on. Um, how big is this going to be? How important? can't tell you. Uh, I might actually make this a little bit narrower, you know, maybe something like that. I think probably a 60 minute level is, you know, somewhere right in that range. So, uh, not surprised. And uh, we'll just see how that acts and how that plays out. Um, but uh, you can see kind of some expansion bars and then a little bit of consolidation. And uh, the 60 minute level is kind of at the top there. So, not surprised about that at all. But that's the way that this thing works. You know, that's the way support and resistance works. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit. 
Uh, and um, if you guys have any questions, uh, now is the time to ask. Uh, I know that we've had some really good questions so far, um, but uh, I'd like to talk about what you want to talk about. Um, if you guys want to see more of the indicator and, and things like that, the flagship stuff, um, that's fine. If you want to dive more into trading theory, that's fine too. Um, all the above. I would like to bring uh, Michelle, our trading coach, in here next week for you guys so that you uh, you can talk to her about the, the mental side of things just because I really feel that that is extremely important. So... Yeah, I sure can. Hold on one sec. Um, can you see an ES two-minute chart is the question, and yeah, we can go over to ES. We will do the ES analysis just for you. All right, so here's the ES chart. And let's go to two minute. And, oh, that didn't, there we go. Maybe I have uh, too much data loaded on this thing. wouldn't think so, but uh, you never know. All right. So, here we go. Uh, looks like we bounced off the 15-minute uh, level. Okay. Just to uh, draw on the 15 the uh, the big time frame zones we have that thing right there that we're looking at okay um, we also have one to the upside up here okay so those are our big time frame zones that looks like we're moving from demand up to supply uh, we're retesting the Globex level right now. Oh, the 150 tick probably, yeah, that that would do it, especially on this market. Um, so there's our uh, two-minute zones. You can see the the nice little consolidation that we had next to the the uh, APA zone that engulfs the uh, the Globex high there. Um, looks like we're getting a nice little move down. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what that looks like there. Uh, you'll notice that my uh, EPA time is actually off. started at 6 o'clock instead of 6.30, so let me, uh, let me do some things here. Uh, I'm going to turn it up to a 250 tick first off just because I know that chart's going to slow me way down if I have it set to 150. If you ever look at the ES on 150, it's like... <laughs> it's just Chopzilla land.
Now, why did I fly? Why did I pick uh, 2,500 tick? I don't know. I just want to uh, somewhere around a one to two minute time frame. And uh, I think right around the 2,000 tick is, is pretty darn close there. Huh. Well, that's interesting, huh? Let me uh, take off the, the zones. Now, uh, looks like the 2,500 tick gives us a little bit uh, different read of, of uh, what's gone on as far as the, the top side of this thing there, right? So... It's kind of interesting. Um, and we can see our 15-minute levels. Looks like price just barely bounced off the 15-minute level. So it did a real nice bounce down here in the 15-minute level. If we connect the gray to gray, um, Actually, that 15-minute uh, level goes all the way down to where that 60-minute level is. So there's part of the overlap of of, uh, of zones and kind of the fractal nature that we see happen in the market uh, as market memory plays out for us. All right. So that's kind of what I see happening there. Um, let's see if you have any questions on that. I'm going to load up also uh, the ES chart here just because I want to go see any channels or anything like that. Uh, on the uh, weekly forecast videos, uh, if you guys get those or watch those at all, I am long on my ES perspective, so we'll see how it, it all pans out here. All right, so let's draw some channels because I want to get perspective on this thing. And I, I usually take a, a few days, you know, in perspective here. So there's that. And if we connect it up to to that point right there, um, you know, that's that's kind of what that looks like. Uh, I really drew it from that to that point. And if you take it and put it to the high there, that's kind of the the channel that I get out of that. All right, so it looks like we are, are expanding into kind of a bigger range, if you will. And uh, something else to look at is, I think this is kind of interesting. You see where that low is right there? And that low is right there before the gap. Um, something there is, is happening, you know. So and look at where that high turned around. So we're, we're seeing something in here, okay? So the top of your channel, and again, you need to use a zone for the top of your channel as well because price doesn't uh, always obey the channels to the tick, you know? So maybe put that right there. And that maybe down a little bit, and there's your your channel lines to the upside. Now it, it is also good to look at the reverse side of things. So putting in a downward channel there, I would copy and paste that and put it down there, and there is a possible down channel type of deal. Um, but we've come outside of that channel once, and now we're retesting that high on a second time. So I 
don't really see that as uh, as what's going on right now. Now, in the bigger time frame, I, I think we we definitely do have some stuff going to the upside here, <coughs> but we're going to have to look several days back, you know, and or more than several days back, like it's it's big. Okay, so we also have an R2 level popping in right there. Uh, obviously, we have like a, a little zone that pops in right there very, very nicely. Um, on the 15-minute bar, you know, you never really got like any engulfing signal, so there's no short from the 15-minute chart. And the 15 minute and the 5 minute zones are exactly the same. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what that looks like to me. So remember, this is how big our 60 minute level was. It's pretty big. But uh, I am definitely long on my bias up here, you know. Um, it's very possible that that this zone up here at like R3, this could be a nice intersection with the uh, with kind of that uh, channel up, you know, if this thing continues to go up, you know, retesting that area up in that level. So we like things to be clean and simple, but uh, this kind of gives me some context of what's going on. And uh, we will see if uh, we can't get something here. So, uh, Kurt, does that help you at all uh, as far as analysis goes and things like that? Okay, so we're retesting the very top of that Globex high. I think that was all you're going to get from the Globe XI, but um, technically this doesn't really match up to what I like to take for entries because I like to see a, a green bar touching the zone and then a red bar engulfing it. And all we saw was red bar touching doji, red bar touching engulf, you know? Um, so I don't really like that, but yes, it did play off the, uh, the what was it, the active zone type that we have here. Yes, it did play off that a little bit. So that's kind of how I read that. And realize that these these levels here on the two minute, this is support and resistance, you know. Um, unless they really last for a long time or something. Uh, but realize that this is more support and resistance on this chart. This would be more of an entry chart using a, another time frame to to give us the context of things. And uh, don't forget that if we take off these zones here, uh, this is like this 2500 tick chart. I don't know why I picked that particular time frame. It just sounded about right considering the volume of ES. Um, like we've had a couple different bounces on this thing that are just above the Globex, you know. And because it's been a couple of bounces on this, it can easily break through it, you know. So that's kind of what I have to say about that. And, uh, you know, maybe 1702, that would be a cool level to get to. Okay, 
It looks like this bottom 60 minute zone is really, oh wow. Yeah, definitely during the Globex it got a lot of love there, huh? Yeah, Price knows where that bad boy is, doesn't it? This thing has been really, really old. quite the level there. Hello, Cash. Um, Bruce, uh, are the app zones based on price action only, or do they incorporate volume also? Um, they are price bar only. Uh, there's no volume calculation in there. Um, it is a momentum calculation that I do use, which just looks at the price bars. So a lot of times you will see epizones being very similar to like market profile and stuff, but it's just because we're looking at the accumulation and distribution of the bars and nothing more. So uh, uh, there's a lot of similarities in between APA zones and uh, volume analysis like VSA and uh, um, uh, market profile. I would say the, the big thing is with uh, one of the big things is uh, like with uh, volume or I'm sorry with market profile um, we really try to put uh, the memory into the market with the zones. Uh, the other thing that happens a lot is um, uh, because we see the market memory so well um, is that uh, those high volume nodes and low volume nodes, uh, they can flip flop and you never know which one to exactly take. So we really try to identify, hey, this one's the, the better one to take. Uh, so that kind of stuff goes on. All right. Um, just to show you a little preview of some of the stuff that we have going on. Um, you'll notice that my Epizones list is pretty big. Uh, well, actually, I don't even have that on there, but let's let's go ahead and show you guys Appa 4. Um, I believe Appa 4 is actually going to be a whole nother beast, if you will. Um, it is, uh, I think it'll be in the strategy area of of the Apizones product, um, just because of what it does. Uh, but we are looking to give price action confirmations of the zones. Because um, you can really trade the zones in a, a few different ways, and it's all how you want to do this, you know. Um, I've just developed a method that works for me, and you can do this however you want to. You know, um, if you see uh, price bouncing on a on a channel line like this, and you say, "Hey, um, I have a 15-minute level there, and I'm just going to take it as it touches the zone," you know, and you put your stop underneath the bottom of the zone, you can definitely do that. You know. Um, uh, there's no there's no problem with that whatsoever, you know. But you could definitely take the the first bounce off that 15 minute level. Um, I think Cash does this uh, quite a bit, if I'm not mistaken. Like he looks for uh, price to be outside of Bollinger Bands and touching one of his 15 minute levels, you know. So he'll have his uh, active zones on here or Whatever, what, what was that level? Where was that level from? Oh, that was a 60-minute level? Hold on.
Okay. Um, so actually, that was a 15-minute uh, chart or 15-minute zone off of uh, this chart here, is where we had the the bounce or the low of the day so far. Um, that's what we were looking at. All right. And if you decide that uh, that looks like it's a good channel bounce and uh, and all that good stuff, then you know what. Um, feel free to take that, you know, as long as you uh, you manage your, your trade right and you feel comfortable taking on however much risk that you're, you're putting on there. Um, or maybe you want to wait a little bit for a little bit of confirmation. That's totally fine as well, you know. Um, either way you, that you go is, is cool, you know. Um, I like to do a little bit more on the confirmation side of things. Um, so I'm making like this AppaZones 4 software, and uh, basically uh, this is like the alpha system right now that I'm showing you, um, but uh, the one that I have going on right now, that's uh, it's actually a strategy, okay? So imagine we have one, two, three, four, five um, AppaZones and AppaZones MTFs on our charts right now. Uh, imagine if the computer could read all those different zone types and give you a confirmation entry off of all those different zone types. And you could actually, uh, basically what I'm looking to do is um, rank those zones. So if it's, uh, if you want to, you can say, I'm going to do my trend following trades off of my 2500 tick chart. Okay, so if it's a zone bounce off of the 2500 tick, that's going to be trend following. And I want to see a little trend following printed, you know, and like the arrows pointing there and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you can totally do that. Like I'm making it so you can totally like print trend following off of any zone bounces off of that time frame, you know. So pop up with a little arrow, blah, 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 trend follow, you know, and away we go. Uh, whereas if it's a, a zone bounce off of the 60, it'll say reversal, you know, um, off of like 60, you know, off of you like your 60 minute time frame type of deal. So uh, you would have both of those type of setups going on, um, and I think that's it's kind of a cool idea. Uh, like I said, it's still in development. There's a lot of things you gotta hash out there. Um, but if you're taking zone bounces um, off of a 60-minute time frame, you want the, like, I'm looking at a, a one-bar and golf or a two-bar and golf type of deal. So you want that uh, trend reversal trade to really be the extreme for several bars that you're looking at. So maybe we'll look at, like, a 1,000 bars back, you know, or 500 bars back and make sure that's the extreme low of those past 500 bars before we give you an entry signal inside of a 60 minute zone and say take that long. Whereas this uh, app zones 4 right now uh, what that does is it actually says I have all these 500 tick zones that are active um, I will give you all signals that happen off of the 500 tick chart, okay? So it saw a, a one bar engulf, a uh, red bar touching this thing. Um, a, it didn't engulf on this candle, but another red candle touched this 500 tick chart, or this, I'm sorry, what was this time frame? Uh, this two minute uh, zone down here, and it engulfed on the next bar, so it gave you a long signal, all right? Uh, same deal here. A red bar touches, engulfed on, on the next bar, gave you a long signal, all right? So same deal there. A green bar touches, engulfed, gave you a short signal, okay? So that's that's the, the idea. Uh, we do not only one bar engulf, but two bar engulfs as well. Um, right now, but uh, with the the strategy thing, episodes for that I'm developing, we read five, six, however many time frames you have applied to this thing, and 
what time frames you want to say I'm taking trend follow off of as well as uh, reversal off of and then we put that into the calculation um, into another calculation and uh, it gets a little complicated but it pushes out a signal <laughs> um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there of what I'm developing and uh, and how that all works but uh, that's coming out as well as this app of time. If you guys would like to have app of time and you currently don't, um, you can take it in its current state. I would like to add a little thing up here on our little menu bar so that you can drop down and say turn off the app of time signals. That'll be out in the release version. But if you would like it right now to use it because it is amazing how we get a lot of reversals right around these time zones, if you will. I'm really big into zones. So uh, if you get a reversal right around a time zone, then hey, that's great. you know. And it just gives you that much more confirmation that something's going to happen. But uh, you never know. So uh, I think this is kind of an interesting deal. Uh, technically, what this would be plotting right now is kind of a trend follow trade to the upside. Um, if things are going to continue to plot the way they are. And you notice where it puts the stop. Right now it puts the stop one tick below the the low of whatever candle it formed the signal on. Okay, But you can adjust that to one or two ticks below the zone or something like that as well. How do you get app of time? Um, you follow a link that I will give you right now. I believe it is uh, on the website. It's appazone slash appatime dot zip. Let's see. Actually, no, it's not. Just one one minute here. <laughs> 